In this lesson, you will understand the basics of 2D frame design, create a simple 2D structure, and create basic loads. In this video, we'll be looking at an introduction to the basic principles of 2D frame design using Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Professional 2021. Let's get started by selecting the frame 2D design template. So here you can see that we're in the start layout. Before starting this tutorial, let's first check that your units are configured for Imperial and the materials are set for North America. This is useful if you currently have a metric configuration, but like to follow the steps for the Imperial measurements. On the standard toolbar, select the tools command. In the tools toolbar, select job preferences. To check your current units, select units and formats and then expand and select dimensions. Here you'll note that my dimensions are set to feet and inches. If yours are set to millimeters and meters and you want to configure robot to be an imperial units, you can select units and formats tab and then just go ahead and select imperial. It's also worth checking materials as well. So again, if I select materials, you can see that my materials are configured for American. And also under my databases here, you can see that my American standards are default. Once you have your job preferences configured, go ahead and click OK and close down the tools toolbar. We'll start by creating a typical structure of a two dimensional bay. On the structure model toolbar, go ahead and select library of structures. In the typical structure dialog box, go ahead here and select multi-story frame and click OK. In the merge structure dialog box, we can now start to configure our spans and our dimensions. In our case here, we're just going to have one span and that span will be 30 feet. And we'll have one story and the story height will be set to 18 feet. We can now start to take a look at the sections we want to use. So we'll select sections and we'll begin by configuring our column section. Let's go ahead and browse. And here I'm looking for a W10 by 49. So there's my column section selected and I can click OK. And for the beam section, we'll use a rule of thumb. So we know that the span is 30 feet and the rule of thumb here is the depth is going to be half of the span. So if we take 30 and divide it by 2, that will give us 15. So let's go ahead and look for 15. And you can see here, of course, when we look at our sections, we've got 12, 14 and 16, but no 15. So we can round this up and use the next nearest one. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use a 16 by 36. Click OK. Finally, we'll check our insert coordinates. And you can see here the insertion point is 0, 0, 0, which is fine. We'll now click OK. Now that our frame is generated, we can start to look at the supports for both of the columns. On the structure model toolbar, select the supports command. In the supports dialog box, we're going to select pinned. And we can then go ahead and select the base of each column. And you can now see those pin supports are configured. Let's click close. We will now focus on the materials that we'd like to use for our structure. In North America, the steel grade would be A992. On the structure model toolbar, select the materials command. In the material dialog box, you can now see the sections that we've simply used. So here I'm going to select my W10 by 49 and my W16 by 36. And then in the materials pull down, I can go ahead here and select A992. And here we'll select A992.50 and click apply. Click yes to both of the information dialogues and then go ahead and select close. Next, we need to cast our attention to configuring some load types. Before we can actually create loads, we need to configure the load cases. So once again, on the structure model toolbar, we'll go ahead here and select load types. In the load types dialog box, you can see the default is dead load one. 
this is where our self weight is going to reside and it's always good practice to have a dead load so we go ahead here and add our dead load but we'll also add a live load and a wind load we can then go ahead and select close now that our load cases are configured we can now go ahead and physically add the loads themselves so once again on the structure model toolbar you'll now notice that we can actually go ahead and click load definition in the load definition dialog box let's begin by selecting the bar tab and here you can see that we can apply a uniformly distributed load so I'll go ahead and select uniform load just before I add this load we need to confirm that the correct load case is indeed selected so here I'm applying this to live load 1 in the Z direction, I'm going to apply a uniform load of negative one kip across the top of the beam. We can then select the add button and click the top of the beam. The load is shown pointing downwards and the display is in kip per feet. This looks correct. We can now go ahead and start to think about our lateral load. In the load definitions dialog, select the node tab and then click the nodal force command. Once again, we'll make sure that we've got our correct load case configured. So this is now going to be a wind load. And here we're going to add positive one kip and we'll select this joint here and click add. So our nodal load has been added. Let's now click close and we'll just review and check these loads by changing our layout command. For the layout, let's now choose loads. When we're in the loads layout, you can see that we have a view of our structure over here, but we also have a table showing us all of our loads. And it's quite useful just to be able to test and check these loads. So let's begin by selecting the live load. And you can see here that we have our load displayed. And here we can see indeed it is one kip. And if we select our wind load, you can see that we have our nodal force applied. Again, one kip in the X. Okay, let's just review what we've got. So you can see our supports are being displayed. We'll also switch on the bar numbers and just review the nodal numbers as well. And we'll temporarily switch on the section shapes. So everything here looks as it should. Let's now save the file. On the file menu, select Save As. Browse to your intermediate folder. And here we're going to call this one part1.rtd. And click save and in part two we'll run the calculations and verify the results